Okay, so we got two speakers 11 meters apart. All right, so I got speaker A here, speaker B here. That's 11 meters. I'm someplace in the middle. The one I did in class, we were over here somewhere. This is a much harder version. I'm someplace in the middle. And they're both putting out a frequency of 646 hertz. And we're using for the speed of sound 344. So we're some distance here from speaker A. Let's call this distance D. Then this distance here would be 11 minus D. If we have destructive interference, then the difference between those, 11 minus D, that distance, the big distance minus the small distance, should be half a wavelength where remember V equals lambda F. So lambda would be V over F. So 344 over 646. That'd be in meters. So this is 11 minus 2D equals half a wavelength. And we could just solve that for D if we wanted. The problem is, this is how I originally wrote the problem. This is how it was grading you. And then I realized later, this is a place, this is one spot where we get destructive interference, but it's not the one that's closest to speaker A. This is actually the one that's closest to the middle. That's in here somewhere. This gives you an answer, like if that were 11 meters, about 3.4 meters or sorry, about 5.4 meters. That's not what we want. There are a lot of places where we're going to get destructive interference. In fact, that will happen anytime we're some odd multiple of the wavelength over two. If this were a three lambda over two, we would get destructive interference. Five lambda over two, 117 lambda over two, any n, lambda over two, where n is odd. If n is even, then we get constructive interference. We just get multiples of lambda. So the way to do this problem is to solve it by keep plugging in bigger and bigger n's here until we end up with a negative d, and then we know we went too far. So we would, here, let's say 11 minus n lambda over 2 equals 2d. So that gives us, if we divide both sides by 2, 11 over 2 minus n lambda over 4 equals all my different Ds. We get a whole bunch of different Ds, and here's lambda right here, and we keep plugging in bigger and bigger values of N until we find the biggest N that works without making this thing negative, and then that's our smallest distance. That's the closest to A we can get. Okay, so let me show you this in a calculator. So I had 11 over 2, 5.5, minus, I could even type it the way it looked, minus n, lambda was 344 divided by 646 over 4. But there's a certain way. I, yeah, here we go. And you can see here, here are all, the, like it's plugging in different n values for me. Here are all the different locations 
where we would have destructive interference. These are all the odd multiples of lambda over two. Half a wavelength, three halves wavelength, five half wavelengths, and so forth. And we're just following this down. Now see, it would be nice if this just kept going down for me and I could see when I finally go from the smallest into negative, but Wolfram Alpha won't go that far for me. I just got to play around here with different odd ends until I go just a little too far. So let's plug in 17. Oh, not even close. Maybe 41. Oh, oh, we're barely positive. What happens if we go the next odd number, 43? Oh, now we've gone negative. So 41 is the biggest in I can plug in. That's the closest I can be to speaker A without passing speaker A. And now that we've solved this, so that's part A, 0 0.041. See? Or I guess 0 0.042. Now to solve when we have constructive interference, perfect constructive interference, we can't just take this answer. It would be nice if we could just take that answer and move over by half a wavelength or something. No, we kind of have to start over. Because right here at this step, we didn't want a lambda over two. We wanted a lambda. So we get multiples of lambda, full wavelengths, and in lambda there. And then here, when we divide by two, we get this. We want our possible distances to be our total distance over two. That's going to happen every time minus n lambda over two will be d. And we plug this in and we find the biggest, we don't have to worry about even an odd here, just the biggest n, biggest full wavelength that will make us go still positive without going negative. It's like the price is right, as, as big as we can without going over. And it's going to be roughly about half of what we did with that half wavelengths, because now we're going by full wavelengths. But like our last n was 41, right? So it's going to be around 20, only now we're going to have a 2 here. So I have here m Wolfram alpha, that expression that I wrote out, and I'm plugging in different values of n here until this number becomes negative, and then I know I've gone too far. So here's n equals 20. If I go up to 21, it becomes negative. At 20, it's still positive. That distance was 0.17, which is the right answer. So, So here's my formula. Right here. When I plug in n equals one, that tells me a place someplace here in the middle. It was like 5.3 ish meters. And then I got my wavelength here. I'm going to keep subtracting off full wavelengths there until I get as close to A as I can without going over. For the other one, I keep subtracting off half wavelengths, odd numbers of half wavelengths, half wavelength, three halves, five halves, and so forth until I get as close as I can without going over. So the two different formulas, this was constructive, Find the biggest n you can, and then destructive.
find the biggest odd in you can without going to a negative number. 